the show. Today I've got a special surprise for you. I'm with Eric Aber. Eric, how are you, how you doing, sir? sir? Good to see you. We're in Eric's kitchen at home. It's the homegrown cafe from home. Homegrown at home. Homegrown at home. All right. So if you haven't figured it out by now, Eric is the owner, proprietor, chef at Homegrown Cafe right. on Main Street in Newark. In Newark, okay. All right, so let's talk about the Homegrown Cafe in Newark. You have a lot of amazing things. I like to start with beer. You have 70 different kinds of beer on 10 different taps. It's an amazing thing. Right. Yeah, we have uh, you know all kinds of different uh, microbrews and craft brews in now. Uh, we source from a lot of local farms and we keep the local flavor in Newark, uh, keep it alive on Main Street. Yeah, you know, that's another great thing to go with the beer and the new spring menu is entertainment. You guys bring that to the table. Absolutely. We have live music three uh, to four days a week. Wednesdays, Sundays, we have uh, live jazz at night. Fridays and Saturdays, we have live music. And Wednesdays, we also feature music with different specials, uh, food and uh, drinks to accompany it. Right. Now, a thing you wouldn't expect normally from a restaurant is a happy hour, but you guys offer a happy hour being right there on Main Street. What else could you do? Yeah, I think every hour is happy at home, probably. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we do have a happy hour each day, and we have great specials, and, uh, you know, one of the best bartending staffs in the state, I think, and they do a great job, so come on by and you know, have some fun with them. Yeah, because, I mean, not only is it food, which is great, excellent food, and we're about to show you that, trust me, but I, I just like the whole atmosphere of the place is it's kind of taking your personality on. It's like it's a laid back place. You can grab a beer, listen to some music, have a nosh. Mm -hmm. a great place to drop by with friends. And then, you know, it's not like really stressful. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we really try and strive for is something for everyone. So the idea that whoever you're with, whatever the occasion is, you come in, you're going to be able to find something that fits your mood and fits what you need and everyone in your group should be able to find something like that. Right, so now let's tell them about the menus because you, as you, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but everything you try to do is fresh, local, and, and from, from nature to the table. Well, it's from, from our kitchen to you. you know, right. That's our idea is that we don't bring in a lot of pre-made products, everything is made in-house and that gives us uh, good control over it and it allows us to hit the flavors we want. And I think in the end, people would like real food. Yeah, I agree totally. So, tell us what we're going to cook for everybody today. We've got a very simple but very lovely thing coming into spring that they Absolutely. can try. Absolutely. This is one of our, our featured salads at the restaurant. It's our apple salad with brie. Uh, what we're going to do is scale back for all the home cooks who want to try and do a little homegrown at home. Um, you know, we have a new menu coming out in the springtime, and this is still going to be on that menu but there's gonna be some other new items to check out as well, but we figure this is the classic, so let's roll with it. Right, and we're gonna show them also a couple tricks. Right? Absolutely, some, so. of the, some of the secrets of the homegrown kitchen. Right. So you can not only get the recipe, but you can actually get the techniques we would use. Which is really good for everybody at home because no matter how skilled you are in the kitchen, there are certain things that restaurant chefs know, they know how to do, they know the quick, easy way to get it done, and everybody at home should know those tricks, I think. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the great things about learning uh, from working in kitchens is someone's got a technique that they just learned that they're going to pass on. And it's, it's a very word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, you know, things are passed down from, from chef to chef. And that's what uh, gets all these techniques so perfected is that they've been tried and true over hundreds of years. Yeah. You know, it's neat. Every time I do this show, every time. So one of the chefs will say, I've got a great way to chop something, be it an onion or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're all just a little different. They're all kind of similar, but every one of them has the cat's meow on chopping. Like, bah, 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 you know? Yeah, so I love it. My way is the best way, of course. Of course. <laughs> what, uh, we're going to show them, and we're going to take off after this uh, for a quick break. But you're going to sure. give them a quick bacon trick, as sure. I understand it. Sure. One, one of the cool things that... Um, a lot of home cooks would go right to a frying pan with bacon. Uh, one of the tricks that we do in the restaurant to get a nice, even, crispy bacon is that we actually cook it on a sheet tray in an oven. Yes. And one of the other tricks is if you put it in a hot oven, it's going to curl up like a shrinky dink instantly. And you're still going to get kind of wavy slices of bacon. So if you want nice, flat, evenly crisp ones, a uh, little bit of parchment paper, lay it out flat, and then go into a cold oven, turn it up to 350 degrees, and keep your eye on it because bacon burns quickly. Does it really? Absolutely. No, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. I was like off to the wrong camera. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after that, and we're going to show you how to compose an awesome salad. Some searing uh, will be done. Absolutely. We're going to do some serious searing. And, and some emulsifying. And we're going to play with the hand blender and emulsify some vinaigrettes. You can't get funner than that. Welcome back. 
back. I'm with Eric Aber from the Homegrown Cafe on uh, Main Street in Newark. Correct. If you're just joining us, Definitely. we're going to show you a salad, a little bit of searing. You missed the bacon tip, so get here earlier next time. So you might realize we're also not at Homegrown Cafe, we're at my home. And so what we've done is we're taking our big batch of apple dressing and we're going to break it down into a small batch for the home cook. Uh, one of the things I do is I like to make my dressings in a mason jar because it is a built-in dressing bottle and it also happens to be the right size for my hand blender to go in. This is going to be the secret to emulsifying the dressing quickly and bringing all that oil and vinegar together so it's not just a loose oily vinegary kind of mess. Cool. That's what actually emulsion means. So one of the first things that we need to add to it is a little bit of red onion. Um, here comes your chopping tip. Right, I always like to take the top and just leave a little bit of the root end intact. That's going to help me hold the onion together. And then I can just take the half I need and peel off a layer with the skin so I don't have to fight the skin. I don't have to try and wrestle with an onion. Um, and I've got a nice clean piece that's still held together by this little bit of root. Right. Um, if we want to do a fine dice, this would really help us. Since we're going to be pureeing it anyway, I'm just going to do a quick rough chop. We're going to put about a quarter cup of this red onion right into the mason jar. And that's going to get pureed up and give it some body, give it a little bit of texture, and um, you know help the dressing to come together. Uh, the next thing that's going to go in there is also uh, an aromatic like the onions, minced garlic. garlic. We're going to use about a teaspoon in there. The next item is... Now, if, if people like garlic, could they add more or would it blow the flavor profile? Um, you know, because it's a light salad, because there's a lot of sweet components, I think too much garlic could could blow it out. Um, but with the onion and the garlic mixture, it's pretty pretty much up to you. If you yeah. want to go heavy and you like that flavor, if you got some really sweet onions, you could bulk them up. If you got some fresh garlic right out of the garden, why not? There's okay. there's no wrong move in cooking. It's just what people like. No, yeah, I understand that. But sometimes there is you know a way to put components together that enhance their their natural properties. Uh, and give you the best taste. Absolutely. So, um, so one of the things though that I think is really important is to make sure these are pureed up well. Um, and before we do that, we need to add a little bit of mustard. The mustard is going to do a kind of magician's trick of bringing the oil and vinegar together. It's it's known as an emulsifier. We're going to use about a quarter cup of Dijon mustard in this dressing. Um, we use vinegar. We use a sherry vinegar, and we're going to put about a half cup of sherry vinegar in there. But that can be a little bright and acidic, and as I said, we've got some sweet components. So we're also going to use apple juice, and that's going to soften that vinegar just a little bit. And I'm going to pour in about a quarter cup of apple juice. Now, got big chunks of onion, big chunks of garlic in there. Before we start adding oil and seasonings, we want to puree that stuff up and make sure it is fully ground up before we start mixing the oil. So get it out of the way. Right. And that way no one gets a big chunk of dressing, you know, with the... Uh, onions and some garlic in there. It's really important when you're doing these kinds of things to make sure those are pureed and ready. Yeah. One of the other ingredients that we're going to add into this that's going to give it some body and give it some thickness is going to be apples. Um, I like to just take the apples, we've washed these, and we're going to use skin and all. The way I like to cut an apple if I'm pureeing it is I take off both sides, big way, and then there's two small sides, small way, and that way we have a cored seedless apple very easy to do. Very easy. Um, again, we're pureeing this up, so it's just a quick little rough chop. Just so that the blades can get in there and puree this up, because this is also going to be pureed into the dressing. And I'm going to use about two-thirds to three-quarters of this apple, because it was a little large. But we want to go with just about um, one cup of chopped apple when all is said and done. And of course, we're going to give this a quick puree. We can add the spices as well now. I've got a little fresh uh, dried ginger, actually. And we've got about a teaspoon going in there. Uh, about a teaspoon of dried thyme leaves. You could use fresh thyme, uh, but I think the dried actually gives a little, little different flavor. It's a little more dressing. intense, right? Yeah, it's, it's just a little, um, not as floral, not as green and, and fresh. So, and then a little bit of allspice. And allspice is a great thing because it does taste like it's got all the spices in there. Yeah, it's true. got a little bit of cinnamony, a little clove, a little bit of different things. And then, Again, we're building on sweetness, so we're going to use a little bit of brown sugar. And that's going to be about a quarter cup of brown sugar, or you know, somewhere around three tablespoons. Right. So we're going to put that in there. And then all this is going to get buzzed up. And then we're going to finally add the oil to make it a vinaigrette. So we've got our sweet, we've got our sour, 
and all of our different flavors in there. We're going to puree this up and get that mixture nice and smooth before we start adding the oil. So the last thing we want to do is try and get the oil to go in there and float around without right. the chunks. So once that is nice and pureed, you can see it's already thick. Yeah. It's already looking really good. And then this is just one of the great tricks that I think many home cooks don't know about. Rather than putting this in a blender and kind of dirtying up a whole kitchen appliance, sorry, um, <laughs> we can actually do it right in the jar and the only thing that needs to be cleaned is the bottom of the hand blender. I've been watching that. I, I actually have one of these, not as nice as that one, but I do have one and uh, you know, it's great for some gravies and stuff. But this is, I like this, it's another restaurant to home tip. Just one of the tricks of the trade. We're gonna finish it off with about two cups of oil and the trick to getting a good emulsification, if you want to hold that, yeah, sure. we're gonna puree it and then add just a little bit of oil to start. And you're going to add a little bit at a time, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the structure of the dressing to build. And as you get that structure, just like the foundation of any good house, you can add more on right. top of it quickly. So It doesn't look oily, but it looks a little thicker, creamier, and more like a salad dressing, less like a uh, garlicky applesauce. Yeah. So that's kind of the finished dressing. And that's now, all finished. I'm going to grab this then. You keep talking. Excellent. Now we can just jar this up, put the lid on top, and we have a full batch of salad dressing that we can use on our salad. Now, I would ask you this question. Would that be something that you would refrigerate and let kind of marry together before you served it or would it go right to a salad either way? Actually, I mean, it would be perfect to serve right now, but it can be refrigerated for seven to 10 days without any real change in quality. Cool. The flavors will, uh, some will intensify and some will mellow. The garlics will kind of mellow, the spices might come out a little more as it sits and it gets to kind of soak in with the flavors and the juices. So one of the uh, one of the other parts of the salad is that we've got to have a little bit of protein on there. Protein is good. Now, we already have a bacon in the oven. Uh, we do offer all sorts of um, vegetarian options. We have seitan and portobellas and tofu that we add on salads, but we can also do it with chicken or fish. There's a couple tricks that we can learn uh, about this. We do a grilled chicken at the restaurant, but uh, not everyone has a grill inside. Maybe it's raining in winter. We want to find out how to get that grilled flavor yes. onto the chicken inside. Uh, and we're also going to talk about the best way to sear a piece of fish. So for the chicken, I use a cast iron pan because it can take a lot of heat. We can crank this up, get it really smoking hot. So it's like a griddle. It's kind of like a griddle, like a flat, uh, like a flat top. But yeah, flat top. That's what I was We're going to get this really, really hot. But the trick with a grilled item um, and with chicken a lot of times is it's not even. So you have a bigger piece up top and a kind of thinner piece down bottom. Mm -hmm. One of the tricks I like to do is we either use a mallet to pound, pound it in, yeah. or we can butterfly it. And this, I think, comes in very handy uh, when we're buying chicken at the supermarket, because a lot of times it doesn't come perfect in size. You have this huge piece, you try to throw it on the grill, the outside's charred into submission, the inside is <laughs> raw, if not overcooked. So uh, this can be done with any size chicken breast. And you can see that naturally it's a little fatter up top and gets a little thinner there. So I'm going to butterfly it, which most people think shrimp when you hear butterfly. Sure. You can absolutely be done with chicken. And you just cut it in half and really gently with a knife kind of open it up till it is one flat, even piece. Okay. That is going to be one of the keys to successfully searing it and getting a good, even cook where the chicken's tender. Because I don't have to cook it very long. It's nice and thin. It's even. It's going to get a lot of brown because it's got a lot of surface contact with the pan. Yeah. Um, we're going to use a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of oil on here. So we've got a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh pepper. And ah. I'm actually going to put the oil. I need one of those. Onto the chicken instead of into the pan. Okay. Now part of the reason is you'll see there's just a couple little wisps of smoke on my pan. Yeah, yeah, it's getting uh, right up I there. If I put the oil in there, the oil's going to start to burn and it's going to start to smoke. And honestly. It's just not where we need it. What we need is oil on the surface of the chicken so it conducts the heat right to the chicken. And that way, we're gonna get that excellent browning. So, just like on a grill, you put it on. And I also recommend this when you are grilling at home, 
you can rub your meats with a thin layer of oil before you put them on the grill rather than trying to put oil over on the grill. Hot flame. Now um, that's, a, that's a smart trick right there because I've watched people do that with the thing. The flames go well, up and they're like, oh, God, yeah, the, uh, the bam, yeah, yeah, the flame right. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't need that. Um, I'm going to clear a couple things here if you'll keep an eye on that real quick. Yeah, I'll watch it. So this is, this is going to go quick. This goes very quick because again, it's oh, you can even, see it going we have a edges. very hot heat, we don't have too much smoke from the oil, and the oil kind of drips off, it's not going to be there. The other trick is, you really have to be patient, you have to let it sit. The char is going to develop um, as the item sits in one spot, Right. the Maillard reaction, it's the caramelization, it's really what everyone kind of wants when they say grill marks, is they want that brown skin. Right. You can also get that with a piece of fish, but here I'm going to recommend a non-stick pan. And we're going to go with a very oh, similar okay. principle, but this one we're going to add the oil just a little bit to the pan. And again, oil conducts heat. Mm -hmm. So without the oil, yes, we can sear it, but it's going to sear better with the oil in there to conduct the heat. And we can move this one to the back burner. All right. Move this one to the front. And we're just going to use a little bit of high heat. Skin side is up to start because we're going to serve that down. And we put the fish right in there. Okay. A little bit of salt and pepper is going to help it to uh, taste good, obviously. We'll do a little bit on both sides. Now, let me ask you what you just said, because everybody's always like drummed it into me that the skin side should go down first. But you're saying you're going to leave it on for the finished dish. Correct. Because I'm going to serve the skin side down, mm -hmm. I want to cook that last. So I want to get a perfect sear on the presentation side, which is the other side. And so the best way to do that is start that before it starts cooking. So we put the fish in, and you'll also notice I didn't salt and pepper that side. Right. Because I didn't want to burn those spices, I didn't want to burn the pepper onto the fish. So we're going to get a nice, perfect caramel sear on one side. We'll flip it over and we can season it with salt and pepper when it's finished cooking. Okay. And that way you're not going to get that kind of burnt on flavor. Whereas with the chicken, we want that. We want to get a little grill, we want to get a little char. Yeah. So we're going for a couple different things here. So are, are we close when this is done to, to putting it together? Absolutely. Once this is done, we're going to pull our bacon out of the oven, which is going to be a nice flat layer. We're going to cut up the chicken. The key to also getting a good piece of fish or meat Look at that. is to letting it rest. So after I've cooked it to the point where I think it's just about done, probably 90% of the way, I'm going to shut off the heat. I'm going to let it rest because all the juices inside have built up under pressure from the heat and they need to kind of relax out into the meat. If I cut it right now, juice goes yeah. everywhere, dry chicken. Dry, right. So all the hard work can be undone by getting a little ahead of yourself. So once you've got it to this point, turn them off, let them rest, and come back and plate up your salad. All right, so we're gonna let you rest. We'll be right back after this. Don't forget to stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. You're, you're to my favorite part of the show. We're gonna plate, we're gonna show them another little trick first, but we're gonna plate and then I get to taste. Absolutely. So what we got is our, our salmon. We pan seared it and then finished roasting it in the oven to get that perfect doneness without it over burning or getting too crispy on one side. But you can see that nice lovely golden color, it's kind of crispy and you got that caramelization. Uh, the chicken we've actually already plated up on a salad. You can see it comes out with the nice golden marks just like if it came off a charbroiler grill outside. Mm -hmm. Got some fresh baby grape tomatoes. Some fancily julienned apples, I'm going to show you a great way to do those at home. Uh, some the bacon, which came out crispy, perfect, even, not burnt in one spot. A little bit of fresh brie, and then our apple vinaigrette. Yeah. So I'm going to demo the apples, and then we're going to see if you can try your hand plating up a salad. Okay. All right. The, the competition is on. So this is one of one of the pro chef's favorite tools. It's called a mandolin. Yes. And it's not a bluegrass instrument like most people think when they hear mandolin. What it is is it's a bunch of knives vertically and horizontally. And what they're going to do is they're going to cross cut two cuts at one time and they're gonna cut perfect little julienne's. There's a dial on here where I can adjust how thick, and there's different size teeth. These are available from anywhere from 30 to $40 for a home model up to $300 for the stainless steel professional one. Uh, one thing everyone wants to be careful is these blades are sharp. Sharp. So when I do the apple, um, it's the similar way to the way I cut it. I start on one side, and I keep my fingers away, and I'll shave it on that one side, until it's pretty much down to the core, down to the seed packet, and then I'll just switch to the other side. And I'm always keeping my hands away from the blade as far as I can. Always, Because yeah. my fingers are a lot more expensive than this apple was. Yeah. So if it came to waste one or the other, I'd rather waste a little bit of apple. 
And then we have the two short sides. We'll do those real quick. And then finally the last side. And what's great about this is <clears throat> that would have taken hours and hours to do this. And you have these perfect little shreds of apples, perfect little matchsticks. Oh yeah. And to do that by hand I don't with think that I can uniformity even do it with would a be knife. very, very hard to do. I would flunk so, this class. <clears throat> not only does it add a great texture to the salad, because it's different, it's almost like a little apple noodle, but it adds some height, some presentation, and a little bit of beauty to the final dish. So, all right, so there's yours. This is right. This is my home. So version. I'm going to see if I can if I can replicate. We're going to see if you can make we're the two match, it. but we're going to use salmon on this one. All right. And again, so. we offer them all different ways at the restaurant. So this right. is two versions of our menu, and we're going to see how well you do. Really? It's kind of a little chopped competition. <laughs> kind of chopped. I would be chopped. Let's see. No, yet. not yet. Okay. Um, so while I'm trying right. to attempt to do this, let's talk one more time about about. Uh, the homegrown cafe on, on New York's Main Street because I want everybody to remember where we're cooking from. Well, Absolutely. Besides your house right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Well, I mean, homegrown has been in business uh, 13 years. We were established in 2000. Um, we've been making good food and having live music and, you know, kind of been the local scene. Yeah, I saw that, Jeff. <laughs> uh, for a bunch of years now. And, you know, we, we think New York's a great town. We've seen it grow and prosper, and we're glad to be a part of it. Uh, the la apples will actually go on last. I'm going to correct you because we got to get some walnuts on there. Uh, and one of the other trick is too, when you buy your walnuts, it, even if they say they're roasted, it never hurts to pop them in the oven for a good five minutes on a low temperature to kind of bring that roasty essence oh, out good of it and make a really good flavor that way. Right. So let's so sprinkle gonna... a little bit on there. And I always say with salads, you know, kind of like pizza toppings, just a little bit. They don't have to be placed in the exact right order because okay. people are just going to toss the salad. Toss once the salad anyway. anyway. So once we do that. Um, so now we're gonna go with my dressing or apple. I like to use the apples as the final garnish okay. because of the way they're gonna sit on there. So we're gonna use our dressing that we made earlier. Again, you know, got the allspice in there, a little bit of garlic, little apple juice, the puree of apple and onion, and a pizza again. Um, this I kind of swirl around and I leave a little bit on the fish, but I want them to see that golden crispy part. You work so hard to get that crispy texture, you don't want to get it soggy with dressing. Right. Um, we can always serve extra dressing on the side. That's a good thing. Okay. But if you find a way to take dressing off a salad, we're going to go into business together. <laughs> I can do it. So then we have that. And then the best way with the apples is I like to just kind of crown them up and get a little bit of drama out of it. A little, little height. height. And it looks beautiful in there. So see if you can add a couple more in there and not tear the whole thing down. All right. So our hours of operation at the homegrown Cafe R. We are open seven days a week. We're Sunday and Saturday we have a brunch and then the rest of the days of the week we open at 11 for lunch and we are open until one in the morning um, for all kinds of good times at night. Right. So we have live music. We have over 70 micro brews, home brews, local brews on tap. Absolutely. We have live music. We have fine food. Right. We have great artwork. We have an amazing service staff. And uh, my wife actually made some jewelry, which is still on display with some other local artwork in some of the display cases we have. Very awesome. All right, Eric, I'm going to I'm going to have a taste. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for letting us in your home. Oh, it's a pleasure and, uh, to have you here. Breaking the recipe down for us to be able to use no at problem. home. Just want everyone to be able to see that, you know, although I think we do it the best at the restaurant, that most of this stuff can be achieved if you just take a little time, take a little planning, and you can make everything at home from scratch. Right. It's not scary. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We're going to take off. Uh, as always, you guys get to watch me taste, and then, uh, you, you know, I feel sorry for you. Thanks for watching, Eric. Thanks again. Hey, it's great to have you. You guys take care. We'll see you next you guys time. guys enjoy. We'll see you at the restaurant. This is really for the salmon one, huh? I'm going for the salmon one. There you go. It's really the favorite part of my show. I'll try that at home. Oh yeah, good dressing. And that, that uh, technique can be used with just about any uh, dressing out there. So not only was it an example of one of our dressings, but it's just a way to make a dressing. Yeah. Start with your aromatics, add your vinegars, finish with your oil. Perfect. Mm. No, this is good. That's a good Scottish salmon. Yeah. Can't go wrong with some wild corn. This would be. Well, obviously it is because it's at your restaurant. I was gonna say, this would be a great lunch menu thing. I should almost do this for a living. You should. I would come. Mm. Awesome. 
very good. You actually want some? Her kidney beans and llamas. We even gave the black ones.